10 years. <laughs> Let's do it. What? Should I say anything about what I'm here for? 10 years. Wow. Little by little, one goes far, right? I need to stop moving on this chair. It's gonna make a lot of noise. We're here to talk about 10 years of Bridget Winder art. What, where do we start? Year one? Year one. What's a good question to start out with in year one? Can you ask me a question? How was Bridget Winder Art born? Bridget Winder Art was born through sketching and through vulnerability and through a lot of feelings. <laughs> so it all started in 2012, the summer of 2012. I was in college and I was just going through a really dark time. Probably the hardest time of my life, looking back which is nuts for me to think about because I've gone through a lot of really dark times and hard things. I just honestly saw no way out. And my sister was creating her business, Cultivate Life, at the time in college. And I was kind of the guinea pig for it. I still am the guinea pig for it. <laughs> and I test all the new products. So she was starting her business, Cultivate Life, and she said, you know, you drew a lot as a kid and you don't journal, um, you know, you don't want to go to therapy, you don't want to do anything like that, so how about you go buy a sketchbook and some pencils and just draw your feelings and just see what happens. I don't even know where I bought the sketchbook. This is the sketchbook. I didn't even use it to draw in. I used it to do my ballet combinations in for, for class. For like why I picked pink, who knows. Then, one night, I just finally started doing it, and I started, I started sketching. It's so old. <laughs> 10 years, it's ancient, it's a relic. This is the first thing that I did. It's this hand, can you see that? So that's the first thing that I drew, it's this hand. I've always had a keenness to hands. I love hands, I think they tell all the stories, and they hold so much of your personality and so much of your energy, and I think hands are an incredible narrative and lens into the human being that you're looking at. So yeah, I started drawing hands. Why with cigarettes? I don't smoke. No telling. I probably was like, oh, smoke. Can I draw smoke? That's really like a lot of the culmination of my art. It's me going, can I do it? So I drew this hand and I posted a picture of it on Instagram when it was just becoming big and a thing. And I hashtagged, I had just learned what hashtags were, I hashtagged late night sketching and that was it late night sketching was born and Bridget Winder art was birthed that's the summer of 2012 and that is when I started drawing something every night I'm not trained I'm self-taught at everything that I do and um, I don't watch tutorials or anything I like to just be as organic as possible and figure it out as if it were only me and the divine attached in the woods. My only teacher is God and we just figured it out together. I found in my life it's, it keeps my voice pure and um, as true to myself as possible. This one's called Children Will Listen, so that's a merge of my musical theater. Eyes from Sweeney Todd, Miss Lovett, Gypsy. So I kind of went on like this musical theater little thing. You know, you do the world that you know. So I'm gonna go through a couple of my favorites. I never thought about selling my art. It wasn't like a thing. This is like I said, it just, it was my journal. This is a week, a week worth of a journal entries, but I put them all on one page because I didn't, so when people were like, can I have that one that they saw on Instagram, I'm like, oh, it has five more attached to it. Um, it just didn't ever pass, pass my mind. This one is one of my favorites of all time. It's Misty Copeland who is a professional ballerina. And you see I put the other one, I just never thought that it would, anyone would want to buy it. Just never thought that. Oh, I love this one. I love this one. So that's pretty much year one, actually. This is August 2012 to November 2012, so it's around half a year. Did it help me heal? It, it did, it did help me heal. If anything, how I would, I would chalk year one up to year one really 
taught me my own voice and how to vocalize and communicate what I was feeling without having to say it. That is hugely powerful to me and I'm sure many of you out there that not all of us are good at talking about our feelings and but we still struggle with being understood and being heard and we desperately want to so this was my way of being seen and heard and I wouldn't necessarily say understood when <laughs> art is like words they can be twisted and people are gonna take it for what it is when you put it out there or what they they take from it for when you put it out there. So I wouldn't necessarily say I'm still understood. I think I'm still vastly misunderstood. But I found a way in year one to communicate myself without having to use words, to be able to put my feelings out there in an, in al an alternate way and the way that I was wired to do it. I recommend for anyone that maybe struggles with communication or struggles with going like why do I feel the way that I feel and or something like that um, you don't have to be a great artist or any by any means or you might have a skill that you didn't even know was up your sleeve and you just sit down one summer and find out that it exists I, I do I recommend through cultivate life this avenue and um, it did it helped me heal it helped me learn how to communicate myself and it opened up a world that I never even, I never foresaw for myself. I take that back. I did. When I was a kid, I wanted to, I wanted to do it all. Be on Broadway and be in movies and also be an artist. I really want to be an artist for Disney. And I still would love that. That is something I wanted to do. And as you get older, people say like, start narrowing it down, narrowing it down, narrowing it down. And this was a moment that I started going like, whoa, I've narrowed down so much. Maybe I don't have to be narrow. Maybe I can do more. Maybe I was created to be more. Maybe my life isn't over and decided at 20 years old. <laughs> Maybe I've got a lot more chapters. And I've, if I cultivate a bunch of seeds right now, um, what can blossom five years from now, one year from now, six months from now, 40 years from now. So I want to encourage you that if you do a lot of things, no matter what age you are, never let anyone limit you and tell you that you can only do one thing and to pick, to pick a lane, to pick a lane, to pick a lane. Figure out your time and get organized and devoted to it and break it up properly and give everything you got to everything that you want to do. Yeah, that's your one.